B cells are important component of the adaptive immune system. B cells, when differentiated, becomes plasma cell. And the plasma cell is the source of secretory antibodies. Now, these secretory antibodies against a pathogen might neutralize them or destroy them. So, B cell and B cell receptor signaling is very important and interesting thing to know about. So, here is the portion of the surface of the B cell. Here we can see the membrane bound IgM which is the B cell receptor. Along with the B cell receptor, many other co-receptor and other auxiliary receptors are there such as CD21, CD19, TAPA1 and one of the most important component in this signaling in the B cell receptor complex is Ig alpha and Ig beta. We would look at their function and how they take part in B cell receptor signaling one by one. Now the antigen binds to CD21 and the membrane bound IgM, the membrane bound B cell receptor of course. Now normally when there is no pathogen invasion or in a normal state the B cell receptors are kind of separated and segregated moving all around in the cell membrane kind of uniformly distributed. But whenever it encounters a pathogen or a pathogenic antigen, the B cell receptors kind of cluster in the lipid rafts of uh, in specific subdomains of the B cell surface. These lipid rafts are most important in terms of signaling. Many events, many molecular and cellular events happen in these lipid rafts and we would talk about that serially. So one of the most important event is the receptor clustering. Now, important kinases such as lin kinase can be part of these lipid raft and this lin kinase can phosphorylate several components of the B cell receptor cluster. So the B cell receptor cluster, one of the most important part is Ig alpha and Ig beta. Now these are also molecules of Ig superfamily and they have something called immunoreceptor tyrosine kinase based activation motif or ITAMs. These ITAMs are site for phosphorylation by SRC family kinase such as the lin, kin the lin kinase which is a SRC family kinase. It can phosphorylate Ig alpha and beta ITAMs and the phosphorylated ITAMs are actually docking site for adapter molecules such as blink. Now other kind of uh, SRC family uh, kinases like psych can also bind to the phosphorylated Ig alpha and Ig beta and can trigger several molecular and cellular event which we would learn eventually. Now this blink adapter is very important in terms of signaling because it could serve like a platform for several signaling components to come in and set up a new signaling system. For example, MAP kinase signaling can be triggered if BLINK work like an adapter. And as a result of the MAP kinase cascade, the well-known MAP kinase cascade, it might allow the binding of AP1 family transcription factor into the uh, nucleus and allow the transcription of several important genes. One such gene that is transcribed is known as CCND1. Now CCND1 codes for cyclin D and if we learned about cell cycle we know that cyclin D is super important for uh, cell cycle progression because it, it it phosphorylates PRB and allow the E2F to bind to its target and give rise to cyclin E which is in turn important for replication and thereby progression of the cell cycle. So whenever cyclin D is produced as a result of antigen binding that means B cell now can divide and form multiple different B cells. So B cell proliferation can occur right. Now this is the outcome, the cellular outcome of the signaling. Now let's talk about a different one. We have already talked about that lin kinase can phosphorylate the items of Ig alpha and Ig beta. Lin kinase can also phosphorylate the items of CD21 and CD19. Now these phosphorylated residues are actually 
a docking hub for kinases like PI3 kinase. Now PI3 kinase can convert PIP2 to PIP3. Now PIP3 is a docking site for AKT and a very important kinase. Now AKT has widespread function including cell survival, including cell division and many others. AKT can phosphorylate and inactivate several pro-apoptotic molecules like BACs and BAD. Thereby, the overall signaling can prevent the death of the B cell and indirectly it promotes the survival of the B cells. So the B cells upon antigen binding give rise to this whole downstream signal which would allow their division, their survival and prevent their death. So this is how the B cell signaling works. The other arm of the signaling which is triggered by cyc kinases, cyc can activate direct phospholipase C gamma. Now phospholipase C gamma can cleave uh, uh, the PIP2 and give rise to IP3 and DHE. The IP3 can in turn go and bind to IP3 receptor in the endoplasmic reticulum which would allow calcium to be uh, released in the cytoplasm and increase in calcium, calcium level can be sensed by uh, calcineurin which is a phosphatase. Now calcineurin can dephosphorylate in fat. Now in fat is kind of restricted to the cytoplasm until calcineurin dephosphorylate that. Now the dephosphorylation of the N fat allows the N fat to be localized into the nucleus and give rise to gene transcription. So in calcium dependent way a variety of gene transcription network is activated upon uh, calcium binding. So this is a very important function of B cell receptor signaling. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.